think we should be quite concerned because, first of all, before this, Russia was somewhat reluctant to share its sensitive nuclear technology with uh, North Korea, just like it was uh, worried about sharing sensitive uh, anti-aircraft missile defense technology with Iran. But now that it is in a far more desperate situation, it might be willing to share that information Mm -hmm. in exchange for weapons and drones. Uh, and what North Korea will do with that is an open question. The North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has arrived in Russia for talks with the Russian President Vladimir Putin, uh, with the United States warning that he should not agree an arms deal. The Kremlin said there would be a comprehensive discussion with Putin as the Korean leader arrived in Russia on his private train. Kim uh, left Pyongyang accompanied by top arms industry Uh, military officials and the foreign minister. Well, joining me now is Julia Yoffe, Russian-born American journalist and founding partner and Washington correspondent at Puck News. Good evening, Julia. Hi, how are you? Uh, Very well, thank you very much. I wonder what you think Vladimir Putin will hope to gain from his talks with Kim Jong-un. Well, I think very simply put, weapons, uh, missiles specifically, and uh, drones, because it seems Russia is running short if it's looking to places like North Korea and Iran for these supplies. I also think given the red carpet welcome that he received, uh, Kim Jong-un received when he arrived in the far east of Russia today, um, it shows that Russia wants as many allies as it can possibly have. You know, before Russia wanted to sit at the Eastern European, uh, excuse me, at the European table, And now it's turning to the global south, to North Korea, to Iran, and trying to get whatever allies it can now that it has lost any hope of doing business with Europe. Yeah. So do we detect a whiff of desperation around these talks that Putin um, is um, resorting really to having to negotiate with North Korea and a figure like Kim Jong-un? I think it's more than a whiff. I think it's a stench at this point. Um, you know, I remember when Russia first turned to you, uh, excuse me, to Iran for drones, and uh, people in Russia that I was speaking to were saying, "I I can't believe it. This is so humiliating." You know, we're Russia and we're turning to a country like Iran for weapons. Um, what have we come to? And I think that's kind of what's happening here with North Korea. Of course, the Russians would frame it differently and would show that, you know, Europe is a small part of the world and a far bigger chunk of the world, including in Africa and Latin America and East Asia, is actually on their side. Whether or not that's actually true is uh, up for debate. Mm. It is US intelligence that has um, said that they feel sure that there are um, actively advancing talks uh, about North Korea providing weapons to Russia. Both sides, we should say, have denied those reports. There is also this suggestion that Putin may be asking for North Korean soldiers at the border with Ukraine. Do you know anything uh, about that? I don't know anything about that, but it, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. I think Putin has done a lot to avoid what happened around this time last year, which was when he and the Kremlin announced a partial mobilization and something like uh, 600,000 Russian men basically voted with their feet and uh, left the country rather than serve in this war. Uh, The mobilization has never really ended. It's happening quietly in the background continuously, which is why Russia has something like 400,000 troops in Ukraine right now. Um, But that need is essentially bottomless. And um, given that Russia used North Korean slaves essentially to help it prepare for the World Cup in 2018, I wouldn't be surprised. What I did notice, though, is that one of the two people greeting Kim Jong-un when he got off the train in Primorsky Krai in the Russian Far East was the local governor, but also the minister, the Russian minister for uh, natural resources. So uh, I wonder if there's more than just weapons being discussed. Yeah, um, we heard from that, that governor that they're looking at launching joint projects, tourism agriculture, development and construction, he said. That was according to a translation. Yes. So that's that's what they say. I mean, should we in the West be concerned about this meeting? Do we do we put this 
in the filing cabinet under, you know, two men with very big egos and quite a lot of power are are meeting to work out how they can help each other and that we shouldn't be too concerned about it or actually actually should we should we be really concerned about what we might get from these talks i think we should be quite concerned because first of all before this russia was somewhat reluctant to share its sensitive nuclear technology with uh north korea just like it was uh worried about sharing sensitive uh, anti-aircraft missile defense technology with Iran, but now that it is in a far more desperate situation, it might be willing to share that information mm. in exchange for weapons and drones. Uh, and what North Korea will do with that is an open question, though I think we can probably guess the direction of that. Um, the second thing is that, you know, ever since the U.S., the Biden administration put out intelligence that suggested that China was considering arming Russia. Um, you know, we've seen that China has backed away from that. But throughout, I've heard sources in Russia telling me that they could imagine China sending those weapons through North Korea so that it's not direct, but coming through North Korea, um, with which, of course, China has great relations as its main sponsor. So uh, I think that's also something to watch for. Really interesting. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Julia Yoffe, Russian-born American journalist, founding partner and Washington correspondent of Puck News. Thanks for being with us on the Evening Edition. Thank you.